Hi, this is Joe, the 78 Collector. Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at the history of recorded sound. Early in its history, sound was recorded on cylinders. Around 1890, the first commercial recordings appeared. They appeared in two formats, cylinders and 78 discs. Eventually, the 78 RPM disc became the dominant medium and is what we know today as the record. Today we'll be exploring the timeline of recorded sound. This episode will be in two parts. This is the first part, which will cover the early development of sound recording. So let's get started. 1857, the first recorded sound. In 1857, Edward Leon Scott was the first to record sounds. His recordings were made on a piece of paper which was covered with soot and then wrapped around a cylinder. As sounds were made into a horn, the needle would scribe a squiggly line. That squiggly line would represent the sound. There was no way to play it back in 1857. The experiments of Scott were intended to examine the structure of sound. In 2008, a group from Lawrence Berkeley Lab were able to digitize Scott's recordings. And they were able to play back the sounds that were recorded in the phonautograph. I'll place a link in the description below if you'd like to hear it. Invention of the phonograph. In 1877, Thomas Edison prepared some sketches of a device for both recording and playing back sound using a foil cylinder. John Crusey, who worked at Edison's lab, took those sketches and about a year later produced the first working model. A verse of Mary Had a Little Lamb was reportedly the first recording made on this new device. Edison envisioned it as useful for business as a dictaphone machine. Tinfoil was not practical as a recording medium either for commercial or for artistic recordings. So Edison's initial phonograph was only marketed as a novelty item. 1885, the first records. In 1885, pre-recorded wax cylinders were marketed. These contained songs, comedy, and instrumental music. At first, Edison's only customers were arcades, where they had an early form of jukebox to play these recordings. But soon, private owners of phonographs began to buy them also. These cylinders were made of a soft wax, and again, like the foil, didn't last very long. The wax recordings deteriorated after about a dozen plays. In 1886, after experimenting with a variety of materials, Alexander Graham Bell developed a hard wax cylinder and a machine to record and play it. Responding to Alexander Graham Bell's development of the graphophone cylinders, Edison returned to the development of the phonograph. And in late 1887, he introduced the improved cylinder phonograph. In 1888, both the graphophone and the improved phonograph were marketed as a consumer item to the general public. Also in 1888, the German inventor Emil Berliner received a U.S. patent for a flat disc record. He formed a company to develop and produce the flat disc record in competition with the cylinders of Edison and others. He began making hard rubber discs for his records in 1894, quickly replaced that with a shellac compound, and that shellac in various varieties was to serve as the medium for records for the next 50 years or so. Beginning in 1896, Berliner's records were made in Philadelphia by a machinist, Eldridge Johnson. When Berliner's company went bankrupt, Eldridge Johnson would later form his own company, Victor Records, 
but more about that later. Elder Johnson had improved on Berliner's machine, which initially was a hand crank machine, by adding a spring-driven motor. Berliner's records continue to exist today. I have two in my collection. The first one is called Street Faker. These are seven inch records. This particular one was recorded in May, on May 23rd, 1896, in Washington, D.C. The quality of this recording is not really good, but you can clearly make out that what this recording is about is a snake oil salesman on the streets in D.C. selling his liniment to the people of the city. It cures just about everything, including ailments of the president, Grover Cleveland, and it's a bargain for only a quarter. The second Berliner that I have in my collection, also a seven inch, is a musical record by Dan W. Quinn, one of the first people to become a recording star. <laughs> The title of this record is What Did Dewey Do? It refers to Admiral George Dewey, who in May of 1898, in a battle in Manila Bay, drove the Spanish from the Philippines during the Spanish-American War. This concludes part one of the timeline history of recorded sound. If you enjoyed this episode, I encourage you to subscribe below and give us a thumbs up. We need all the support we can get. In our next episode, we'll look at the rise of Victor and Columbia as major recording companies and the rise of record sales. So for now, this is Joe the 78 Collector saying goodbye and stay safe.